Alfred, what is all that? Oh, hey, Hippio. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm just making metal keycaps. You're making keycaps. I wanted to be like you and do DIY. <laughs> I said you needed to pay rent, and this doesn't look a lot like rent. No, no, look, they're so good. Like, check this out. See? It's like a real keycap, but it's metal. <laughs> Alfred, you know somebody already had that idea. Wait. And they already made metal keycaps, right? You, you're telling me that <sighs> I could have just bought this the whole time? Years of research and development gone in the wind? <laughs> I tried metal keycaps, so you don't have to. Why so you don't have to? Well, let's just start with the fact that I spent $400 on them, but we'll get into the rest later. Howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and I have scoliosis. The only fix is you hitting the subscribe button. Well, or surgery. This story starts with, ooh, a metal box that I spent $400 on, and a question about Cheetos. Oh yeah, also I'm gonna try making my own keycaps with aluminum, but we'll get into that later. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. But first, because we're gonna be looking at some keycaps, I'm gonna need a keyboard, and I'll go over this relatively quick for you. Now, here's my general line of thinking. We're building a keyboard with metal keycaps, I need to get a metal keyboard. Now I know what you're thinking. Well, you're Hippio Tech. You have hundreds of keyboards in your closet. And I'm thinking, why have you seen my closet? That's kind of weird. But anyways, um, I have chosen the Frog TKL. No, that isn't the government launch codes. That is a keyboard from Geonworks in Korea. Now, this keyboard is remarkably hyped, and I'll tell you why in a few quick sentences. First, it's from Geonworks in Korea. Anyways, I've built out this keyboard in the past, and I'll put the video in the top right if you want a lot more info. But hey, hey, don't click that yet. We're still talking about some stuff. What are these? Are these little Hippio guys? No, they're actually just stabilizers that I chose in my brand colors, but I think they look pretty cool, so there you go. This board also has RGB, which means that I can test RGB with the metal keycaps later. You're welcome. And other than that, it matches the keycaps I'll be using perfectly in color, which I thought would be pretty cool. I figure if you're stupid enough to spend $400 on some metal keycaps, then you're probably silly enough to buy a really expensive keyboard, so I wanted to give these things the best shot possible. And don't worry, we're getting into the metal keycaps soon enough. Also, sorry if you hear any airplanes going over, there's like an air show or something, and I'm recording, I need to upload this tomorrow, and... Build, what? For this build, I'm using Kinetic Labs Huskies. If you'd like to know any of the stuff I use in this video, I'll put it down in the description. These have been lubed, which I'll also put lube down in the description. You can save 5% with code HIPPIO. These Huskies are a linear switch, which means they don't have the little bumpy bump or click, which we hate clicks. They never wanted to sit with me at lunch because I kept talking about Minecraft, which wasn't cool at the time. It's kind of mean, honestly. Anyways, these feel pretty nice, and I think these will give the board a relatively thocky sound. Yeah, we said thock. That's how you know it's a Hippiotech video. Now, at some point, I wanna try these keycaps and every other keycap with various types of switches and board combinations. If you wanna see a video of that, then leave a comment. Also, leave a comment for my descent into madness as I try and make my own metal keycaps. Yeah, I told you we'd do that. Now, my first thought for making metal keycaps was not to make metal keycaps. My second thought that I got from a friend, Josie, thank you, Josie, was to then cover keycaps in aluminum foil because obviously that's metal. So I've got my keycap. This is Polycaps Whale from Kinetic Labs. Uh, they're not a sponsor of this video. It's just what I had laying around. And I'm going to cover it in aluminum foil. Now there's a couple thoughts I had here. Number one, is this keycap even going to go down? Number two, is this keycap gonna somehow make it sound better or worse? And number three, can I, attempt to not cut my fingers open on aluminum foil. Now I know what you're thinking. Hippio, this is a stupid idea. Yep. Anyways, I figure if you have $5 for a roll of aluminum foil and you want metal on your keycaps and you don't want to spend $400, then bada bing, bada boom, you got metal keycaps. Now you're probably wondering how these sound or if they even work at all. And here you go. Yeah, so have you ever thought to yourself, man, this linear switch sure isn't clicky enough? Well then, there you go. Just cover your keycap in aluminum foil and- Oh my god! We did it! It's the box! It's got the keycaps! See, I told you we'd get to it. It only took four minutes. Hit subscribe, thank you. Anyways, these keycaps are- Ow! Livia! Ow! Ow! Livia, stop! Ow! Ow! Um, they're Olivia keycaps. That was a dumb joke. I got them from Novel Keys for- <laughs> For- 416 US dollars. 
Who approved this video idea? Was it you, Johnny? You idiot? You dummy? Ow, Johnny, you freaking ow! Ahem. <clears throat> Anyways, these are full aluminum keycaps that are in the style of Olivia keycaps. Oh, Olivia. The famous, incredibly cloned GMK set from Novel Keys. These keycaps have a disturbing lack of information available on the website. And we'll get into that very soon. But first I had to prep my keyboard for, you know, using aluminum keycaps. Or is it aluminium? Hmm, you decide, British people. Now the Frog TKL when I built it last wasn't honestly that good. I was pretty underwhelmed, but I figured it out. All I have to do is take this carbon air filter that I <coughs> <coughs> stole. It's in, it's, it's got some dust on it still. And cut it up and fit it into the case. And then magically all my life problems are solved. Who knew, that's all it took. Now this is what we call dampening a keyboard. If this is interesting to you, then check out some of my other videos, like one where I put kinetic sand in it. No, I'm not putting dots in the keyboard, I'm just eating them. Now, next I'm using a little bit of tape to tape mod this thing. It kind of act as a little bit of a filter to make the board sound a bit deeper and poppier. Like I said, I wanna give these little, little keycaps the best shot they can possibly get. But pretty soon, I'm gonna be rubbing some Cheetos on them. Uh, we'll get to that quite shortly. Now, I asked my channel members, which you can be by hitting the join button down below, what they wanted to know about these metal keycaps. And Cranger asked if there's a difference in feel between a heavier spring or a lighter spring. Now, with these keycaps, they aren't that much heavier than normal keycaps. Like, the space bar is double the weight, but the actual keycap itself is maybe only a couple points of a gram heavier. The only thing I noticed was on a 35 gram spring, it felt just a bit easier to press, but that's about it. If you want a chance of your questions being in a future video, then either hit the super thanks button or join the channel down below. Now, obviously, the aluminum ones are nicer than the ones I made with tin foil, okay? I'd wager to say in general, the craftsmanship on these is pretty good. They're CNC'd aluminum, so they have a natural machining mark type of look which is honestly quite cool. But I think ultimately I'm still wondering how they're gonna sound on an actual keyboard. And let's go ahead and just find out. Uh, find out. Oh, look, it's built, nice. Okay. Now my first impressions with these visibly are they do look pretty cool. However, they change drastically based on the lighting that you have them in, which you'll see as the little slides go by. In really bright room lighting like this, they look great because the metal's reflective. But in darker lighting like this, the harsh shadows really make it kind of look like a bad render. Also, I'm a huge fan of the Olivia colorway, and in aluminum with this silver alpha colors, this ain't it. Like from certain angles like this, ooh, beautiful, pretty, elegant, Apple, engineering. But then like, it leaves you thinking about how much money you just spent. Now sure, the price is probably justified. This probably took hours and hours and hours of CNC machining and quality control, but was it necessary? Speaking of necessary, it doesn't necessarily let in any light from LEDs, but I don't know what I was expecting. And with a board with RGB, you don't get any special effect from using these. I figured, ooh, shiny, that means it must reflect the lights nicely and look quite good, but it's a bit lackluster. I think the ceramic keycaps I looked at in the video before, link in the top right, were a bit nicer. But oh my god, what's going on? Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. Oh, it's the Cheeto thing. So I actually can't eat Cheetos, but I did go out and buy Cheetos just for this question from one of my channel members. And a friend of the channel. Hi, E1. Love you, buddy. And we're doing the Cheeto durability test. Now you're probably thinking, Hippio, oh god, why are you rubbing a Cheeto on this incredibly expensive keycap? Well, look, it's covered in oil and Cheeto dust now. Isn't that insightful? This is like my, my gamer test. So like, if you can wipe it clean with just a tissue, then that's pretty good. And, oh, what is this? Oh, it actually wiped clean with a tissue really easily. <laughs> that's what she said. Anyways, one other thing I also wanted to test was whether or not these would scratch easily by removing them frequently many, many a times with my keycap puller link in the bottom left. Yeah, I'm testing a new feature for YouTube where the links are in the bottom left of the video. It's a view product button. It's actually different from the description. Uh, check it out if you're in America. If not, sorry. But ultimately, after about 20-ish removals, I didn't notice any scratches on my keycap or the surrounding keycaps. This could be luck, or it could be that they're actually really durable. These are anodized aluminum, so I figured there could be some type of issues or defects, but honestly, the quality control on my set that I purchased came out pretty good. But you're probably thinking, why would somebody want these at all? Anybody. Why wouldn't I just get normal Olivia keycaps or the clones or something? or the authorized clones like I have here on the Zoom 65. 
Uh, because they sound metallic, I guess. I'm gonna be honest, the sound of these on most of the keys doesn't sound much different than a normal keycap set. If at all, just a little bit sharper. But the spacebar sounds like you're dropping a penny, and I really don't like that. I think if you're spending hundreds of dollars and expecting a keycap set that's gonna blow your mind with thocky thock, then this ain't it. That's the, the title. I tried them so you don't have to. Look, run the title, run run the credits. Wait, the video's not over yet? Oh, I actually had to get a little bit more thorough and let me compare them to normal keycaps now for you. So really the only difference is a space bar, but I know what you're thinking. Hippio, that's just one keyboard. So, okay, I'm gonna try it on a different keyboard. And now I'm going to use Olivia authorized clones just to compare similar vibes you know so i'll leave you with this last little sound test comparison between double shot ppt and aluminum keycaps if you like this style of video then make sure you hit the like button leave a comment and love me forever thank you